you um, so much for having me. Um, I sincerely mean it. It is an honor to be here with everyone here, um, to be in a room with a group of individuals who are passionate about the same thing that we're passionate about, and that is providing comprehensive health care services to individuals in our state who need it most. Um, I want to talk to you uh, briefly about our organization and our care management process. I'd like to give you um, an idea of what our assessment process looks like for our high-risk patients. I'm going to talk to you about how we utilize the SDAC data to identify high-risk patients. And finally, I want to share with you how this process has impacted the life of a RICO patient. So first and foremost, SLU Family Health Center is a federally qualified community health center. And we are at um, a bit of a, uh, I guess we're a little different than, than some other clinics because our mission is to provide comprehensive health care services to a patient population that uh, otherwise wouldn't have access to those services and often suffer um, in part because of that. Our care management program um, has a unique model, again, because we are a federally qualified community health center, um, in that within our clinics, we have disciplines that are functioning. And so we have a comprehensive, integrated system of care that has a number of different disciplines that are available to our patients and to our care managers. So we created the interdisciplinary wheel model of care management. So as you can see, uh, we have each of the spokes of the wheel. We have our dental program. We have uh, chronic disease educators. We have uh, behavioral health, integrated behavioral health in each of our clinics. Additionally, we have a pharmacy that offers low-cost medications uh, to, our uh, to our patients. We have a transitions of care team who can meet patients in the hospital, help transition them from the home to the, ho to the clinic. Um, and we have social workers um, that are working all in the, in the confines of our, of our clinics. And so for a care manager working in the center of this wheel with the patient as the center, their job is, is not easy, but they have resources at their fingertips. Now, where's the provider in this model? The provider is an additional spoke um, and an equally integral component of our interdisciplinary team um, that is, of course, again, available to the patient and the care manager. Now, the, the concept behind our, our wheel model of care management is basically to have our health care that we're providing in our clinics be a shared effort so that the individuals who are involved in our patient's care um, are able to, because of time and resources, do the things that they are great at, whether it's education, whether it's treating the patient, whether it's offering behavioral health services um, or social services or resource allocation. Uh, this model allows us to work as a team and move in the right direction um, to provide care for our patients. So with this in mind, we have our patients. We need to assess them. We need to assess what's going on with them. And so our assessment uh, process that we use, you know, we're still in the infant phases uh, of care management and of the ACC world. We really only became delegated um, in the spring of this year and realistically haven't been doing care management all that long. So we wanted to create a tool that was customized to our clinic and to our system. We looked at the evidence. We looked at um, other other uh, assessment tools, other risk assessment tools that were available. And then we surveyed our disciplines, that interdisciplinary team, and we asked them, if you could ask your patient three to five questions that depending on their answer, it would indicate that that patient needed to come into the clinic and see you, what would some of those questions be? And so this process led us to our health needs assessment. Notice it's not health risk assessment because the individuals that we're surveying um, are basically already risky patients, and so we want to identify what their needs are. Some of the questions, for example, that our dental providers gave us are, do your teeth feel loose? Are you bleeding from your gums? Um, our pharmacy uh, asked us uh, that they would ask, they said that they would ask a patient if they're getting their meds from more than one pharmacy or if they forget to take their medications. And so this health needs assessment really allows us um, to get a, a picture of where that patient is coming from. So our goals of the health needs assessment are to provide a methodology for quantifying need. Uh, it allows us to assess performance and progress. So in six months when we do a reassessment, will their answers change? And it also helps us to identify areas of focus for our patient care plans. And ultimately helps us to ensure that patients are receiving the right resource, care from the right resource at the right time in the right setting. Now. 
how do we identify patients? So again, we're in the infancy of, of our care management uh, efforts. We uh, have care managers that can receive a referral from our interdisciplinary team. So a provider can say, you know what, this ACC patient has a little extra need, I want to refer them to the care manager. So that's one avenue. Our transitions of care team could meet a patient in the hospital, then go to their house and say, you know what, I don't feel comfortable managing your needs, I'm going to refer you to a care manager. But we realized that the SDAC is very important to our accountable care collaborative effort. In fact, it's one of three areas of importance when we talk about the accountable care collaborative. We've got the RICOs, we've got us, the PCMP, and then the SDAC. If the SDAC is the primary data repository where we're getting um, information, if the SDAC is what we're using to measure the success of the Accountable Care Collaborative, we want to tap into that as we're identifying patients for care management. But the problem with the SDAC, all due respect, the problem with the SDAC is it does come with some limitations from a practice management standpoint. And the reason I say this is because Salud is actually in four different RICOs, four different regions, and we have nine clinics. And so the last time we ran an all-members report, we had 11,000 patients that were attributed to us. So if I'm one care manager working in one clinic, and I do an all-members report, and I look at a number that is 11,000, forget it. I'm not going to get anything done. I'm going to waste all kinds of time swimming through that data. Um, and I'm not being strategic or focused. So this is a Region 3 and 5 meeting. We have two clinics in Region 3, so we're going to use uh, Region 3 as an example. If I use the filter function, which we saw, to narrow it down to something smaller than 11,000, for Region 3, my number is 3,155. I don't know anything about those patients. All I know is they're all attributed to us in Region 3. So if I'm a care manager and I want to reach out to high-risk patients, that number isn't really in line with the evidence that maybe one in 50, it could be one in 4,000 like North Carolina, but I don't feel comfortable managing 3,155 patients alone. So let's look at a filter and do an all member report. RICO 3 with a CRG, clinical risk group score of greater than or equal to two. We know 1.000 is baseline, so if I look at two, maybe that'll give me a better number that I can work with. That's still 477 in region three alone. So let's try again. I like this one. This is a KPI, key performance indicator, ER visits. We define a high ER utilizer as greater than or equal to three visits in one year. What's this number in region three? 265. And I don't know anything about these ER visits. I don't know if these are just people who are really unlucky and happen to be in the ER visit ER three times or if these are actually inappropriate utilizers. Let's try again. If I do an all-member report, RICO 3, most expensive 25% of our patients, which last month this number happened to be $2,777.13, I think, and up. So now we're talking about 826 patients. And so there, that's still not a really a good number. And it's not a strategic number, because I don't know where the money has been spent, if it's been appropriate expenses or inappropriate expenses when we think about total cost. Let's try again. Go back to the drawing board, go back to the key performance indicator. I'm going to look at three 30-day readmissions. If somebody's been readmitted to the hospital at one point in the last 12 months, 20. Now, I can deal with 20, but do we only want to focus on people who have been readmitted to the hospital alone? The answer is no, because we've got patients who are utilizing the emergency department. We have these outliers. So I don't like that number either. So our solution was to create what we call the priority patients algorithm. Okay? So let's talk about this. What is the priority patients algorithm? It's a method of strategically using the SDAC to identify high-risk patients from a large population of patients for care management. Let me tell you what the priority patients algorithm is not. It is not a fail-proof method of identifying every patient who might need care management. 
And the reason I say this is because of those outliers. We might find somebody when we use our algorithm that we'll see in a second that is a high ER utilizer but doesn't fit any of the other uh, qualifications or categories. And so it's important to look at your outliers. It's important to utilize the resources you have in your community if that's a relationship with a hospital, if it's a, a report that you're receiving from a hospital group. Um, but don't think that this algorithm is the end all. Just use this and you'll know everyone who needs care management. So how do we create this algorithm? Well, the algorithm is a compilation of our clinical risk group, total cost, 30-day hospital readmissions, and number of ER visits. These are what we call our risk indicators. Okay? Priority risk is the sum of the four risk indicators. What this means is our risk indicators, CRG, total cost, 30-day readmits, and ER visits, are each given a value. Now again, we haven't been doing this for that long. And so we're still experimenting with weights. Our initial weight that we used was we gave somebody who has been to the ER three times or less, or three times, exactly one point. If they've been there more than three, they get two points. So how do we do this? The first step, log onto your dashboard and you run an all members list. Okay? For us, again, that's 11,000 patients. Overwhelming. The second step is to pull it from the SDAC dashboard and then push it through statistical analysis. Now, we used SPSS for our statistical analysis, but you can use Excel and you can use Access. You just have to use the IF formulas. Um, and so it is possible if all you have is Excel or if you don't have any idea what SPSS is or you don't know how to use it. So what SPSS does is it analyzes that data and it groups it groups our patients into priority risk scores and priority risk groups. And for our priority risk groups, it gives each group a color, red, yellow, or white. So as you can see, our top priority group is a five, yellow is three to four, and white is zero to two. Once we do our statistical analysis, the data is pulled and pushed back into Excel. Now this document looks almost identical to your SDAC um, Excel spreadsheets, only you can see there's a couple new columns. We've got our risk scores, and then the important one, our priority patients column. And that priority patients column has the value, and that's an indication to your care manager that these are people that you want to hit first. Now, remember those values? That is where we get this. Make sense to everyone? So, Region 3 has two salute clinics. One of those is in a town called Brighton. All right? Let's pretend like I'm a care manager in Brighton. I have now narrowed down all members to Region 3 to one clinic in Region 3, and I have this number, 62. This number, 62, represents 61 yellow category or yellow priority group and one priority group red. Does that make sense? So for me, when I think back about where we've come, 62 is a much more reasonable and strategic number than 3,155. Does that make sense? So what I want to do now is walk us through this procedure and how it affected a patient. This is a data profile. This is a data profile for somebody who I will call 54-year-old male. 54-year-old male has a CRG score of 3.087. Total cost, 13 grand. Zero 30-day readmissions and six ER visits. This is easy math. He's priority risk group four. Okay? Yellow category. What are we doing with this? Our care manager found this individual on our priority patients list. So this patient was identified. This patient received a health needs assessment, that specific assessment that's specific to our organization. His needs were assessed. And care management, weekly care management, was established. Some of the things that uh, this gentleman and his care manager talked about were transportation, smoking cessation, of course, uh, how to adequately manage his disease. Um, most importantly, 
how to access the clinic, how to connect to the clinic in an effort to decrease inappropriate utilization of the emergency department. Our care manager gave this individual his direct phone number and said, you call me anytime you have questions about accessing resources. So the lesson that we learned from this gentleman is that was an ER visit that would have been inappropriate, unnecessary, that was avoided. And so it's an example of how strategic patient identification and focused care management have impacted the life of this RICO patient. So this allows us to, of course, complete the mission of the Accountable Care Collaborative to increase health outcomes and decrease cost, decreasing costs in this case by reducing an inappropriate utilization of the emergency department. And it also allowed us to ensure that that RICO patient got the right care in the right setting from the right resource. Any questions? Don't be fooled. This patient doesn't have the care, the care manager's cell phone, personal cell phone. But our care managers have uh, direct lines that go to their phones that only they use in the clinics. Um, and so we're a pretty big health system. We have a call center. That's where most of our appointments are made. Uh, we decided to make an exception for our RICO patients to ensure that they had direct access when needed with a care manager. And so that's how that happened. Absolutely. So now that they know that that's the correct person to address the questions to, it shows that you guys are on the right track. Exactly. And one challenge that we've had is actually getting a hold of patients. And so I think when our care managers get a call from a patient, it's, it's huge. a huge success for them. And so that's the behavior that, that we absolutely want to foster. Any other questions? So the health needs assessment was developed. Um, like I said, we reviewed the evidence um, to see what kind of health risk assessments were out there. Uh, we did look at what um, other practices are using to assess general risk or need for patients. But really, the bulk of how that assessment was developed came from internally, um, asking each discipline what are some questions that, that would be good for you to ask your patients that would indicate that they need to come back into your clinic to see you.